Good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to be able to welcome you to our evening service as we count down the minutes until Christmas morning. Time ticks as the ancient promise proclaimed by prophets prepares to take on flesh. Time turns as the word waits in the darkness and anticipates his first breath. Time trickles as the light grows stronger and expects delivery, arrival, birth. For tonight we stand on the edge of incarnation, the place where eternity touches time. God's heart moves closer and the darkness shivers in the shadows because of the coming light. This is watch night. This is where we welcome and worship the living God. We gather to remember your coming among us in Jesus as a tiny baby, snugly wrapped and laid in a manger. For the time was right and you couldn't wait any longer to be with us. And so you came, showing us the depth of your love reminding us of heaven's way and calling us back to you that we might receive the love, the mercy, the grace and the new life you offer. And so we come with all our hunger and seeking and longings for meaning and wholeness for our world, our town, our families, ourselves, our church, and pray that you will draw close and near, that as we sing and listen for your word and prepare to welcome the dawning of Christmas Day, your Holy Spirit would be found mingling among us, stilling our restless souls, and filling us with calm, quietening our tired heads, and helping us be fully present, stirring our hearts with the good news of heaven's love, that we might receive the peace of the Christ child this night, and cradle it anew in our hearts. For we've made it. We are here on this holiest of nights. Amen. reading this evening is from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, 
but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done, as people rejoice when they harvest their corn or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation that oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of Midian long ago. The boots of the invading army and all their blood-stained clothing will be destroyed by fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on the right and justice from now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty has determined all this. Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading from his holy book. We will now sing our next carol. Number 303, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.
Our Gospel reading this evening is from the book of John, reading from chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace, and truth. Amen. The next hymn is, I believe, number 313, See in Yonder Manger Low.
had heard the rumors, but I hadn't seen them with my own eyes until I went into the petrol station to pay for my fuel on Friday. And there they were, boxes and boxes of cream eggs. Even earlier than last year, I thought, could they have not at least have waited until we'd celebrated Jesus' birth? Such is the rush in our society to move us on to the next thing to get us to spend our money. Yet there is a connection, of course, between Christmas and Easter, between the manger and the cross. But let us not rush. Let us take these moments to ponder the wonder and the mystery of God, who would come down as our last hymn said, to such a world as this. In all its beauty and fragility and uncertainty and mess. And meet us, just as we are. For that is what God did. For when the signs had failed, when words proved futile, when it felt like no one was listening and there was no faith left, when love was thin on the ground and everything seemed broken, God decided that there was one thing left to do and did it, leaving the splendor and the safety of heaven and came to earth to be with us. That's what we remember tonight. The power of a scandalous love that moves the maker of the universe to come among us as a tiny baby to save us from ourselves and show us the way, the way to freedom, the way to peace, the way back to God. For the word, the light of the world, born and laid in a manger, was Jesus. The son who John tells us is nearest the father's heart and who showed that heart with every beat. Healing the sick, living in solidarity with the poor, being a friend to sinner and outcast and those on the edge. Jesus' life personified mercy and grace and truth and justice. And he showed us in all his living and his dying and his rising again that God is for us believes in our ability to love offers us life and longs for us to be at peace with ourselves with each other and with God and there are no ends that God will not go to to make that so coming to earth as a baby, putting his life in our hands, living a life full of light, showing us what it is to shine, giving his life on a cross, leaving us in no doubt that all enmity is over, finished, and rising from the grave, that we might believe that eternity is ours and that God is with us. Amidst all the rush to move us on to the next thing, as Christmas Eve gives way to Christmas morn, in our hunger, our longing, our searching for meaning and wholeness, may the rumor of the angels reach our ears and the truth of heaven's love be received in our hearts this night as we remember the wonder and the mystery of God, who would come down to such a world as this, in all its beauty and fragility and uncertainty and mess, and meet us, because God's heart beats for us. God loves us now and forever, just as we are. Amen. And so with that 
thought in our hearts. And with just a couple of minutes to go, let us stand and sing 309. Still the night, holy the night. The promise is fulfilled. Heaven is here and always God is with us. The peace of the Christ child be with you all. Happy Christmas. Shall we take a moment to share that peace and that joy with one another? Happy Christmas to you, David. All was cool. I can breathe a sigh of relief now because we got to midnight on time, that was good. So let's stand again and on this Christmas morning sing, sing 301, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Please be seated. Before we sing our final carol this morning, let us draw together and offer to God our prayers of thanks and, of course, our prayers for others this Christmas day. Let us pray. Saving God, Emmanuel, the glorias are booming. The heartbeat of heaven is pounding loud and clear, for you are with us. The light of the world is here. Yet as the light dances, we're all too aware that we live betwixt and between. In the now but not yet of creation made new and your kingdom come. And so on this morning of incarnation, we pray for the places and people who walk in darkness, who need to see the dawning of your great light. Shine then, shine brightly in the lives of the poor, the oppressed, the fleeing and the waiting, who wonder if fairness will ever arrive and touch their anguish with infinity's reach. Shine, shine brightly in the place of your birth, amidst the rubble and razor wire and deep pain of so many. Touch their desire for ceasefire and peace, O Lord, with heaven's resolve. Shine, shine brightly this day in the minds of the depressed and despairing, filled with darkness and panic. Touch them with the hope of liberating light. Shine, shine brightly in the hearts of the lonely and grieving filled with memories of what was or might have been, and touch their emptiness and sadness with the peace of heaven's time. And shine, Lord, shine brightly in the souls of the sick and the dying, those who nurse and those who watch on, and touch their fear with the comfort of love's eternal grass. Shine in us, Lord. Shine in our town, in your church, in the world, so that through your people, suffering, hate, and despair might be scattered by the hope, the joy, the peace, and the love of the Christ child as we bear and follow and reflect his light, the light that shines in the darkness and will never, ever be put out. So be it. Amen. And so, let us stand and sing our final carol this morning, 306, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
go in peace this Christmas morning. And may the blessing of the everlasting God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all this day and remain with you forevermore.